Hi everyone. Today is the 1st of May. It's the first Wednesday of the month. I wish to welcome everyone now who are in attendance in uh, this 64th visit meeting. A hundred of us on the uh, Zoom room. Uh, we could have more, uh, but our maximum capacity in the Zoom room is just a hundred. So I'm afraid beyond a hundred, you're not able to join in this meeting. Right. I'm, I'm so excited because, you know, we have Jared Rent with us today, who's the speaker, to, to give us more information about what he's got there. But without much ado, I'm going to open up my PowerPoint presentation and share screen with you. And then we will be, um, well, you know, on schedule for yeah. everything that we need to discuss here. All right. So I'm going to share screen now. Share. Right. This is Physique. Physique is a free energy special interest group to those who are new here. Um, it is, <clears throat> it is um, our 64th meeting today. Um, today is the 1st of May and uh, we have here my co-chair, Dr. Elizabeth Donovan, who will be co-chairing me for the first session. And um, of course, uh, Dr. Fresh Fresso will chip in on again as well. He's helping with the recording and and the uh, uh, the hosting of this session, and James is as well. And then on the second session, we have Pontus Hester, who is the uh, uh, the main person in uh, the coming up of the uh, the free energy device prototype that we are almost completing. So we can uh, move on to teaching you how to build your own free energy device to power your own home. Right, our uh, physics platform is a, uh, a science meets spirit platform, S science meets spirituality platform, where it is an open-minded platform, where, and anybody who is in the pursuit of free energy can join us to share your ideas, your innovations, and uh, even if you like, you know, to open source your your technology through us. Um, our objective is, of course, you know, to help you build free energy devices for your own needs. And the secondary objective is, well, hope, hopefully it will spin off into a cottage industry or manufacturing or communicating, I mean, with the community sharing and creating employment as well. So uh, we have today's meeting agenda agenda the new members and we, we there are so many of us here in the zoom room so we wouldn't have time to do um self-introduction here in the zoom room time is so precious we want to hear as much as we can from jared it's so precious here so here i am crystal gore who's the initiator and uh, um uh, well administrator of uh, physique we have elizabeth donovan and pontus hester as well co-chairing with me in these two sessions in this meeting we have two sessions per meeting and jared rand will be talking about the rv funding free energy replicators disclosure intel and updates of the celestial chamber for healing and rejuvenation and then we will then adjourn to the second session of the 64th physic meeting which will continue with the physic r d team headed by pontus in the making of the buoy marine motor generator prototype the meeting will then adjourn to the 65th physic meeting on the 5th of June. So we hope you join us again. And uh, of course, it's the first Wednesday of the month. If you remember, the first Wednesday of the month is a physic meeting, and it usually starts at the same time. It does all the time at 7.30 uh, British Standard Time. Okay, so if you want to contact me, you write to crystal at truevisionofpeace.com, and our website is truevisionofpeace.com forward slash physic, F-E-S-I-G dot H-T-M-L. Okay, right. So I'll stop sharing now and I'm going to introduce Jared very quickly. Jared of Jared Rand's Global Guided Meditation Call spoke at Physics 63rd meeting about the Celestial Chamber for Healing and Rejuvenation. Today, he speaks about free energy, RV, funding, and disclosure intel. And of course, he keeps us updated with his celestial chamber, which uh, has been such a popular subject. 
And Dr. Elizabeth Donovan co-chairs with me in this first session. Uh, Jared Wren actually grew up in a military family, the youngest of five children, and the whole family had traveled the world whilst uh, Jared's growing up. He's here at this time with his, this planet to assist the civilization, to break away from its enslavement and to free its consciousness to think for itself and lead itself. He brings uplifting and enlightening messages in his guided daily meditation globally. And I think he has a following of about 5 million to date. Wow, that's a lot, Jared, well done. And he has a lot to share with the world on disclosure, intelligence, information. Just prepare your impertinent questions, folks, and join us. I mean, I mean, put it down, type it down in the, um, in the um, uh, chat room with your questions. And James Rink will be putting your question forward to Jared to answer them for you live. <laughs> Right, so there you are. Thank you very much. And shall we then just um, call upon Jared to take over the microphone? Thank you, Jared. Will you please come forward? Thank you, Crystal. It's a pleasure. Thank you so much for that uh, kind introduction. And uh, thank you, everybody. Uh, uh, Jared, sorry to interrupt. Uh, Jared doesn't have a webcam, and so we don't see him. But I'm going to share screen, if, with your permission, of his photograph, if that's all right, Jared. That, that's fine. Thank you. That's all right. Yeah, thank you. That's lovely. So there you go. Carry on, Jared. Um, and talking uh, like I, I did last week, or the last time I was on here, uh, just to let everybody know, we have a, uh, we are processing and developing the celestial chamber into the first unit prototype. And uh, obviously we're constantly progressing with meeting with groups and generating funding in order to have this uh, successful completion. And once we have that, we will then go into a testing phase with a handful of people on a very secure basis. And then we will move to, once that is completed, we will move to a first run unit production models. We will do um, probably a dozen of those. And at, at that point, we will move to different groups on the planet where we will sit down with them uh, and go over the protocols uh, and the security uh, for them to commence uh, produ producing those. They will be given open sourced information so that they can, they will also be given an actual unit and we will go over its operation. Our uh, physicists, uh, quantum physicists and our AI people and our uh, fabricators and everybody will be there uh, to discuss this with them. This is probably the best way we know how uh, to start getting it implanted around the planet so that we can start getting it into the hands of certain caring people that uh, have really no egos involved here that they can begin to uh, make, manufacture these celestial chambers so that we can start affecting a massive change on the planet as far as healing, you know, the disease, the, all the turmoil and the stress and things that go on with the human body that are unnecessary, uh, that have been uh, literally, uh, I guess, flooded onto the civilization for many millennia. And, you know, we will end that. That'll be an ending for uh, this civilization on this planet. But we also uh, have we call it, it's called a box. The best, it sounds real simple. It's a box. It has no moving parts. It, ha, it, it is not magnetic. Uh, it can generate um, a neighborhood of homes. I don't, you know, 50, 60, 70 homes. Uh, it, 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 it depends on the capacity needed for the area and for the application, but it, uh, it emits no heat. Um, it will not wear out. There are no parts needed to be replaced with it. It is totally self-contained. 
It does not need a source to be plugged into it to power it. And it will literally, you can run a whole continent with these boxes. And the boxes will um, operate from a different perspective. The uh, units in a, in a, let's say in a dwelling that you have, uh, usually we do cordings and, and uh, wires and circuits and all kinds of stuff, archaic, totally archaic stuff. Uh, these will communicate with any devices in the dwelling uh, through light particle communication. And the light particle communication will be in a form of, it emits, again, it emits a, a tachyon particle field directed to encompass the plasma field, which then communicates with the light particles within the field that then brings the particles together and then directs the frequency to the area that is needed in the different devices to power them. So uh, basically, uh, without getting into real heavy technical application, um, wires not needed, will not be needed. Um, this will literally power the dwelling and everything in it pretty much forever. Uh, children can sit on it. It doesn't emit any harmful waves of any kind. In fact, it, 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 it emits a harmonious uh, toned frequency uh, for healing and balance of the biologicals in the unit, in the dwelling. So in addition to it providing power, it harmonizes the atmosphere and the, the, the humans in the dwelling will not have, uh, the, their moods will be uplifted, their frequencies will be increased uh, to a easy, uh, comforting uh, atmosphere within the dwelling. So this is unique. It not only does it power uh, the facility, but it also uh, gives off frequencies that harmonize the biologicals in the unit, uh, animals, humans, any life form, plants, doesn't matter. Uh, so that is, that's another technology that we're going to, we're gonna, we're gonna incorporate that with the celestial chamber. So we're gonna have a string of technologies that we'll introduce to these various outfits throughout the planet and they will begin manufacturing, you know, the celestial chamber once we get that up and running, then we'll go with the boxes, uh, then we will go with the replicators, uh, and you know, we'll switch to the replicators really quick because uh, I know I don't have much time here. The replicators literally create any through a uh, an AI that's controlled. We we emphasize a controlled AI which has barriers so that it cannot become self-aware. Uh, so it performs the functions from the database and directs uh, those functions uh, as far as let's say you want. You want a steak dinner, uh, you know, grain-fed beef, uh, potatoes, whatever. This is all in the database. Every food source, every applicable recipe, uh, but without GMO, without chemicals, without any of that, uh, that debris that poisons our foods and our waters, uh, can be instantaneously created through voice command. Once it's created, eat it. It's, it's wonderful. And then the plates or whatever it's been generated on, you can put those into uh, the same chamber. It will re-atomize. It will literally disintegrate that molecular structure of that construct back into the plasma field. So it's, it's, there's, no, there's no refuse. There's no trash. There's no garbage. There's no leftovers. It's all done, um, period. So if you want leftovers, sure, you can you know, you keep them, but you don't, really don't need leftovers. You can create uh, just about anything that, that the database has available to it. Water, clean, pure water, uh, all the food you need. Now you can take these and we can power them with the box. We can take these, you can set them out in the middle of the woods and have all the food, water, and anything you need, period. So, you know, this pro these technologies will eliminate things like batteries. Uh, we won't need batteries. They'll be, they'll be useless. 
Uh, it'll eliminate all this archaic garbage and caustic, toxic mining of lithium uh, and lithium mines that destroy the environment and do damage to the wildlife. This is all going to be gone. It's eliminated. Of course, we have to take great steps in order to protect this in a very, very, very secure way so that we can uh, eventually uh, get it uh, into the hands of as much of humanity as possible. There are fail safes uh, in these. Uh, you, you know, obviously you cannot create anything that will do harm to others. It'll be it's written right into the coding in the database. So there are some, some security measures involved with these technologies that they cannot be abused. We're talking about the civilization moving into more of a meritocracy, which is do no harm, which means do no harm to anyone or anything. It means the environment and the ecosystem. Uh, and basically respect all life. So, you know, these technologies are being introduced at this time so that the civilization can move in a much higher uh, existence uh, frequency-wise. Um, and, you know, there's, we, we have many of these technologies that we have been graciously afforded the responsibility to present them to the civilization of this planet. And that's what we will do. Um, we have a, a translator device that will end all all communication barriers on the planet will end them all. It will also operate as a communication to anybody and anyone on the planet. Okay. Through uh, the uh, light wave technology. Light wave means that it will use particles of light for sending and receiving communications. And, and there's no limit on its ability to transmit data, either receive or send into the thousands of terabytes. It's pretty much limitless on its speed, its clarity and accuracy. Uh, this does not need satellites. It does not need anything but the atmosphere and the light particles in the atmosphere. So even in the pitches of dark, there are light particles. Um, one thing that I wanted to address is, uh, as I'm jumping around here, uh, is uh, the monetary process on this planet is very interesting for a lot of people because it's very delicate, because there's so many different applications going on here. It's very confusing for people. When you've been steeped in a civilization for millennia where you are controlled, and you are directed, and you have, you do not think for yourself, you do not lead yourself, you're always being told what to do in some way, shape, form, uh, or size, depending on the delivery system. It could be media, it could be uh, governments, it could be uh, jurisdictional codes, uh, it, a lot of things, regulations, so on and so forth. So when the civilization doesn't think or lead itself, then you have these external authorities basically dictating to it. So you, you've got all of these, all this information that's being shared out there. And it's very difficult. You have to remove yourself, which isn't easy from all of it, from the whole structure, from the illusion, from the matrix, however you want to label it. Because it is an illusion. It is not a reality. And it is not how this civilization uh, is to live at all. Uh, it's been a, a blatant interruption of our evolution for a long time. So the, um, if you do that, then you're able to see clearly, it, you, break, you break away all the constructs and all of the, the, the pressures and the control factors and the mechanisms that dictate to you that this is insane, it's not real, it doesn't work, this, this can happen. It can't happen in one way. It cannot happen in the current structure that we have on this planet. The current structure we have on this planet is dysfunctional. It will not operate. It never worked. It never has worked for thousands and thousands of years. 
is because everything has been dictated to the population. Many things have been kept from the population. It's kept it in ignorance, so it can't flourish, it can't advance, and it can't expand unless it's controlled by the handful of authorities on the planet, uh, which is basically an end run of devastation. Now, uh, but with the monetary system outside of this, this is the way it was always supposed to be, but it was interrupted and it was infiltrated by off-worlders in the beginning to basically enslave the civilization without it knowing that it's enslaved in most cases. Uh, basically, the new financial wave is unlimited wealth and prosperity eventually for the civilization of the planet. It's you have to have a, a carrier, something that can introduce it more in a subtle way uh, and not in a, in a blatant in your face way. So it has to be introduced on in a gradualization basis uh, of information here and there. And you always remember where there's smoke, there's always fire. There's always got to be combustion with smoke. Uh, so you realize that the unlimited wealth has to be distributed amongst the people of the planet. In order for this to be done in a seamless way, there are handfuls of people who are at the ready to receive the wealth so that they can begin to responsibly distribute the wealth through job creation, through other forms of generosity, so eventually the civilization begins to adjust more and more. We begin to bring in the, the uh, technologies. The technologies take away a lot of the fears, uh, a lot of the misunderstandings, uh, a lot of the needs and necessities of humanity. Uh, and, and we can, you know, right now we can build, uh, within a few hours, we can replicate a 2,400 square foot facility with no problem whatsoever, uh, without harming the environment. Okay, and, uh, and many technologies can be incorporated in that dwelling where you don't have plumbing, you don't have waste disposal, you don't have any of that. Uh, these things are archaic, absolutely archaic. So, uh, but in the financial arena, this is the, the whole purpose of this. It, it isn't wealth for a handful. This is eventual wealth for the entire populace of the planet. And high prosperity, wealth, well-being, uh, immortality. Um, these are things that aren't talked about much because they're, you know, it's hard to get them out in a controlled environment. So you have to get them outside the matrix, outside the illusion, so that people can start comprehending this and embracing it as a truth rather than some kind of sci-fi movie. Uh, this is, this is impacted uh, uh, technology that has been held uh, from the civilization for thousands and thousands of years, literally. Uh, you know, we, we've been convinced that we came out of a, uh, uh, let's put it this way, that we came out of the dark ages and we, you know, we, we kind of advanced through the years. Uh, there have been civilizations on this planet, very advanced. The Egyptians were very advanced, way more than we are today in many ways. So uh, the Mesopotamians, the Syrians, goes on and on and on. Some civilizations that no one's ever heard of before uh, on this planet through millions of years. So what we're doing is we have a full package that we're, you know, along with the technologies, the financials are inevitable. They cannot be, it cannot be uh, intercepted. It, you can see a lot of the uh, flailing around and the insanity that's been exposed that's always been there now it's out in the open it's because the collective consciousness of the planet has gone to such a frequency where the civilization has begun to understand that this is all nonsense it doesn't work for the civilization in harmony so it, it will be eliminated it will phase out its frequency can't be held in in the higher tones uh, it, and, and it just it will dissipate and vaporize and that's what's, that's what's currently taking place here on this planet and inside the planet. So if you look at it in a summary, we have the technologies. First, we introduce the financial shift. The financial shift's intention is to wealthify the civilization, everyone, 
not just a handful of people banging their chests and buying all kinds of stuff. Uh, this is for uh, our brothers and sisters, for everyone on the planet. Those in responsible position of receivership of funds uh, will take on the responsibility of, there are groups who have committed their lives for this purpose of different projects for the civilization, job creation, way higher. Nothing like the jobs that we see today. Nothing like the, the, the HR resource structure that we see today. None of it will be the same. You have to remember that this structure that we have all grown up in for thousands and thousands of years is not gonna be here. It is gonna be gone. It is gonna be eliminated, period. Uh, nothing that we experience today will we be experiencing as soon as six years from now, uh, as soon as 10 years from now. It's going to advance very rapidly as the civilization becomes more awake, which means in clarity of their own self-thinking and self-leadership, it's going to expand in advance. Regulations are going to drop away. We are not going to have all of this garbage that's been containing and suppressing the wonderful minds and wonderful inventiveness of each and every human because we all have that ability. It's just been suppressed. The child imagination will come to the forefront and the bodies will be renewed. Now you imagine the power in that that will expand across the planet. It's already, it's already been engaged. So the technologies that you hear about, they, are, they have been invented with other civilizations. They have been used many times. Now, for the first time here on this planet, they will be used to assist the civilization into a much higher frequency and harmonious existence. It, it's just, it's been constructed that way. And the other end of it is had this not occurred, this planet would eventually cease to exist in all life on it. That's just not acceptable. So we've turned into, a, into the direction that I'm describing now. Uh, we will have these as, and, and the proper time element uh, that allows us the financial support uh, that we continually seek for it. And that's the issue with all of us that are, it's not like we have a big brink truck that drives up every day and dumps mm -hmm. money into our accounts to pay for these things. We have to do whatever we can to get uh, the donations that we need in order for these things to become a reality. Um, there's a lot involved that uh, because of proprietary information I'm not allowed to go into, but there's a lot involved. Uh, so we, we also I'll make it, it really clear. See, it's difficult for a lot of people to comprehend the fact that the life that we have now will cease to exist. Eventuality uh, dictates that we will have total peace and prosperity, phenomenal abundance. The abundance will get to a point with the civilization where it isn't needed anymore. With the replicators and the technologies that start coming in and eventually will be everywhere, that you won't need money. Everybody will have it. This is one way to phase it out of the civilization. And this is what's going to occur. And this is why those who have lived, breathed, and fed off of the civilization for power control manipulation uh, are doing everything they can to, to just do, uh, to stop, deter, or bypass what is an inevitability, which is peace and prosperity and love, joy, and appreciation, and gratitude, uh, and leaving anger, stress, aggressive tendencies behind. Uh, this is the, the transition that's in play now. And those of us who are here to assist are here to assist until it is completely in full swing. Everything else is unacceptable. So the, just understand, I, I, I present this in a much different way than everybody hears about this, the different labels of the, the monetary shift. Um, it's, eventuality will eliminate the need for money for the population of the planet. And obviously the technologies have a great impact on assisting with that. So you can picture that every human, every 
being, because not all of us are human, uh, on this planet will experience great wealth, abundance, and prosperity. Eventuality will be immortality. The body will not die. Sure, you know, if you have, if you have a ton of bricks fall on you, it's going to destroy the body. But, uh, and, and sensible understanding is that the reality is, is that no sickness, no disease, okay, no aging. I don't care if you're 100 years old now. We will, re we will reverse the aging process of the body. Aging, no matter what anybody says, is a dis-ease. It is a configuration of the control of the cellular structure of the human form to dictate its ending, to dictate to the cells when they should cease to replicate so that it deteriorates and in, rea and in reality it rots away. This is not acceptable either. This encourages a civilization to branch out as it becomes self-aware and as it advances, and I mean self-aware biologically as far as human civilization, self-thinking, self-leading, become geniuses in their own direction and their thought processes, expand out into the solar system, out into the galaxy, and then eventually into the universes and other densities to explore and to literally populate other planets and interact with thousands of civilizations across the galaxy alone and different quadrants of the universe. So it's, it's unending. The technologies will continue to come in. They will continue to advance. They will continue to proliferate the civilization and uh, assist. So, I think I, I, I think I have, have my time, Crystal, is that it? Right, I have to unmute myself, stop sharing, unmute myself to speak. I just <laughs> yes. want to make sure I'm on time here so I don't You have, have more time, while. Jared. You have a bit more time than this because we started about, I think, 10 minutes late or so. So you okay. have more time, yeah. Please do talk about, you've talked about about funding about the uh, prosperity for humanity um would you talk about the free energy part of um of uh you know um and <laughs> powering up the uh, celestial chamber for instance and the other free energy that we all could have in yes. our homes yes sure um talking about the free energy uh, devices obviously there are many different groups on the planet working on many forms of free energy devices. So it's going to be a plethora of different avenues for humans to determine which free energies they want to incorporate. Uh, and, and, and this isn't about money uh, to, to, you know, profit and gain and power and control. It's a shift in the um, kindness, generosity without ego. Um, peace and distribution on a responsible manner of these energy devices. Uh, you know, I don't speak for the, the other groups because I'm not really informed a lot about uh, their technologies, but I do know that they have many that they are readying to present to the civilization of the planet in, in a secure, protected way. All of them know this. They can't, unfortunately right now, we just can't come out all together and have a big, you know, a big meeting in a coliseum and have everybody come and pick one up and take it home with them. Uh, so it has to be done very carefully. Uh, that eventually will happen, but not, not uh, on, on the initial launch. So like the celestial chambers, we will use a box is the best way to describe it. Without going, it's a box. It looks like a box or a cube, so to speak. Uh, it's not sharp corners, it's square. I call it a, a box, but inventors call it a cube. And what the cube does is it, uh, it, it kind of works from some of the technology applications of a replicator, uh, but not all of them. It attracts uh, high frequency energy particles from the plasma field cosmic energy and it accumulates and then 
it enhances and expands that energy continuously. So as, you, as it brings it in, it processes it and it expands it. You no longer need ACDC, okay? It senses through its own AI, it senses the power requirement for other devices, okay? And, and then I'll go, we'll go one step further. But in the beginning, what it will do is it will sense the power needs of those devices and it will literally transfer the power needed to, um, to, to make them work unendingly. Uh, I'll give you an example. Uh, in the beginning, when you don't have a replicator yet, and say you've got a cube, and you take the cube and you set it wherever you want to, uh, it will penetrate everything. Uh, it's uh, it's delivery system. It, it's just, so uh, let's say you have a refrigerator, which is a real hog on energy uh, with the AC uh, that it needs. And the refrigerator is unplugged from its wall socket. You bring a cube in and the cube identifies the power usage of that unit and then it translates that into a light frequency wave to the unit to power it, okay? And the unit then is powered and continues to operate forever, as long as you want it to. It will do this to every unit that needs power. It will sense that it doesn't have its own source of power, that it relies on some form of power to make it work, and then it will, it will send the light wave energy to it that will cause it uninterrupted that will have it to, but it will cause it to work eventuality will be is that many cubes will be housed in any kind of a unit that needs to be powered uh you know forever you, you don't ever need to turn this stuff off now these old technologies like this refrigerator stoves and everything they're archaic and and they you know they rely on um expending, uh, you know, generated frictional energy, electricity. And so, uh, which can be exhausted, right? It's old, archaic. But when you use the cube, you eventually they'll have many units inside these devices that will just continually power. You won't need a sending unit. You won't need one cube going to all of them. You'll, they'll have their own source. Uh, again, no, no, no heat emission, no noise, no nothing. Uh, it's li literally effortless. If you understand the quantum arena, you understand the hyper quantum physics. So it's, 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 it's beyond, beyond. Meta, meta, uh, the uh, construct of, of quantum physics where size has no meaning. Really doesn't. Uh, you know, a particle of an element about the size of a peanut, uh, the density of it is, is so heavy that you can't pick it up. You can't move it. Even a crane can't move it, a mechanical machine crane, because its density is so, uh, uh, it's, it, it's so dense that you, it's so heavy. One little particle of different elements in the universe that here on this planet, uh, we just don't have yet. They don't, they're not aware. So, um, but the, the cube is what will power the celestial chamber. It will set underneath the housing at the uh, right corner of the footing and uh, it will power the whole thing. There won't be any wires, you know, plugs, going here, going there, all that junk, no Wi-Fi, none of that stuff. You know, no radiation wave transfer, nothing. And it'll just power it. So it'll be self-powering, and uh, which will make it easier to move and operate. Uh, the, uh, you know, the cube is very formidable for uh, power users. And I, and I wanted to add something else. You picture dwellings on this planet, since we all live on the surface, and most civilizations live underneath the planet. They live underneath the surface because they don't care to go through all the storms and all the stuff that can happen on the surface of a planet. 
They don't do that. They live underneath to stay out of the harm. So on this planet, since the civilization lives on the surface, most of it, there's other off-worlders who live inside the planet. But uh, those of us who live on the surface of the planet, um, you have a dwelling. And let's say the dwelling, is, let's say you're experiencing, you know, they're gonna, there's a storm coming of some kind, sheer, severe storm, um, high winds, say 100 miles an hour. And you've got a house, it's got electrical, it's got plumbing, it's attached everywhere, it sets on a foundation. Uh, it can be blown off the foundation. It can be destroyed, as we've seen through the years. So what happens is, is that the dwelling has no wires, has no plumbing that we know of, that as we know as plumbing. Uh, and there's no waste disposal or anything. So I'll give you an example. You, you need water, you'll have water. Uh, you need food, you'll have food. Uh, you need clothing, you'll have clothing. Uh, whatever your needs are, we met through the replicators. The, uh, the unit can literally, through an anti-gravitic power system, it can lose its gravi gravity, and, and the, it, will, it literally, anti-gravitic drive bends light, all right? So it manipulates time. And so basically it will, it will raise up, you can have it go up, hover up as far as you want, above the storm if you care to have it, all right? The, the, the AI will read the external situation, oxygen flow, everything, and that you will be located in an area of calmness where you won't have the winds, you won't have the disturbances until that storm uh, subsides, and, and then you can bring it back down to solid surface. Water is created instantaneously. You take a shower, water, you don't have holding tanks, you don't have any of that. It's created instantaneously. The, uh, where do you think water comes from? It comes from the atmosphere of the planet. It's generated through plasma energy field that's been condensed through consciousness that creates form, which then we either eat, watch, cut, burn, whatever we do. It's all in frequency energy, it all is housed in different forms of frequency, and it also takes consciousness in order for it to come together as some form appearing dense material, that whether it's a coffee table or an automobile, whatever. So it all comes from the same source. Everything comes from the same source. It's just configured differently. So in the dwelling, the house, whatever you want to call it, totally self-contained, repairs itself. If it has stress fractures or it starts to have a degradation of material uh, that causes security problems, it will repair itself. It will repair itself in a biological way because the material used to construct it is living. It is not synthetic. It is a living energy. All right? So it's not synthetic. That's a big difference. So your water, your food, everything is taken care of. Cooling, heating, all of it, taken care of, period. A new heating technology, literally. It circulates the interior air. It then tempers it with the right moisture, and it heats the air instantaneously. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, it's heated to 72. It could be, it could be 20 degrees, and within seconds, it's heated 70, 71, 72 degrees, period. Same, same in the summer. It could be 110 outside, and you could cool the air down too, because that's what you're cooling. You're cooling the air. Uh, it'll cool the air down to, if you want it, 60, 50, 40 degrees. Just depends on how, what comfort range you have. These are all technologies that are available to the civilization of this planet. They've just been kept for a long time, locked up uh, away because, you know, can't have the civilization flourish and advance and expand. It has to be kept contained. Um, and this is, th that construct is disintegrating and the new construct is being ushered in. So imagine dwellings that operate that way. You really have no maintenance, 
you have no worry. Uh, you want to improve something on the dwelling, you can replicate it. You can actually go in, design it, you could voice design it, or you can visual design it, and it'll be replicated. So it doesn't matter. There's not going to be mortgages or any of the garbage that they have perpetrated on the civilization for so very long. All that stuff's going to go. It's not going to exist. So the flexibility and the freedom with the understanding of do no harm and uh, assist and help others uh, mm -hmm. is going to be the structure. And if you do harm, obviously, then you're going to be held accounted. Yep. Yeah. Time is running on a bit. Would you talk about the replicators now that um, you had uh, uh, touch on the free energy part of it, the replicators? And then next, uh, if you would like to touch a bit on the, uh, um, well, I ask you to talk about replicators because during the last meeting you were saying that, uh, um, you were saying that eventually every household is going to have a, uh, celestial chamber. So it's going to take a lot and a lot of production through the manufacturing um, to get the uh, celestial chambers out for everyone. <laughs> and oh, well, in good time. So I thought that um, it will be great if we have replicators, then it could be done. It could be done very, very, very quickly. So would you talk a bit about the replicators? Because you did mention just now that before the replicators come out, this is what we have to do. So would you Tell us about how the replicators are going to be uh, assisting this mass production for the people. Thank you, Crystal. That's a good question. In the beginning, we have to manufacture them, okay? Mm -hmm. um, but, but this also is a good thing because it, it gets humanity involved. It gets people involved with it. They can embrace it, use it, and we want people to expand it, see? We want the bright minds out there, because I believe every every human being, as we know, has, uh, excuse me a second. Um, we have, I, I believe that all of humanity, everyone can become a genius in their own way. So they have tremendous, and to increase their imagination where it used to be years ago, to expand on this technology that can do wonderful, even one more advancing, more wonderful things than the initial rollout. So what we will do is we will have groups start to manufacture them. And then as we get the replicators in abundance, we will then do test runs to determine if we can replicate the celestial chamber. Uh, once those tests are completed, we will then send replicators to the various manufacturing facilities because you have to have housing to house the units. You have to have ways of distribution to get them over the planet until we can get point-to-point -point transfer functioning properly. So uh, we, will use it. we will use technologies that will take them very quickly to different parts of the planet. Uh, and we have anti-gravitic drive. We can go anywhere on the planet within 15 seconds. We can move very quickly um, to get to, to different, you know, serious situations where that, a replicator is needed. And then we can get them to the locations where they're manufacturing. Uh, and then we'll do the same way with the replicators, run them, do a process of introduction uh, so we can tell their groups exactly, you know, how they're manufactured, how they're put together, what the uh, the, 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 their uh, capabilities are uh, and then get those running and then eventually obviously to get more and more celestial chambers out there and other technologies will go into full-blown replication so our manufacturing base will turn into distribution that's all very good <laughs> thank you Jared for putting in uh, an idea as to how the replicators are coming into action because it's going to be very disappointing. It's parts of the, parts of the population has access to the uh, celestial chambers and uh, most of them don't have it because <laughs> we can't really churn out enough of the uh, celestial chambers for everyone on time. Right, I also would like to ask if you would talk about uh, the um, 
um, okay, replicators, free energy, uh, disclosure, Intel. I mean, you did touch about that earlier on when you started talking, but would you tell us more about what's going to happen? Uh, okay, you did say that uh, the the RV is going to happen, right? The revaluation of the exotic currencies, and it's only meant for people who are responsible for fulfilling the divine mission here. Did you say that? And I get it that, that you were saying that only people who have their divine mission in place and have humanitarian projects are uh, to receive this um, uh, funding this way. And is there a, 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 a procedure where uh, the, the, the people who are responsible to, to qualify these people for the exchange would know whether they are the right people? Is there a sort of a, a technology where, where you could use to to gauge the soul signature of the person, whether the person deserves to have the funding? Uh, there is a uh, connection with all life, uh, anywhere and everywhere. So with humanity and, and the inhabitants of this planet, you know, people are gonna have to, they're gonna go through an adjustment period. There's really no, you know, there's no other way uh, the adjustment period will take place. You know, when you have, let's look at it this way. You, it, it's really difficult because we're, we're not talking about the current construct. We're not talking about the economy, the structure, the financial structure, the stock market, all of those things that have been in place for umpteen generations. That's totally separate. So you look at it from a clean perspective and a clear perspective of understanding is that you, you, have, you have to have a vehicle. You have to have something that people are familiar with that can you, you act as a vehicle to distribute wealth. There's only a handful, comparatively speaking, to the population of the planet that has been really given access to these, uh, this wealth. There, it's, you know, it, comparatively speaking, it's a small amount of people. Now, in those groups, you have people that, are com totally committed to, to taking on the, the, the humongous responsibility of enacting and engaging these massive projects, small, medium, and very super large, uh, from start to finish. You have other people that will be distributing wealth responsibly to other people in, every, in, in different ways that they can is to not upset uh, others so, so, so to not to create some kind of a panic or gimme gimme want 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 which unfortunately is in this civilization so when you uh, you take all these different currencies that have been devalued uh, right down into the gutter uh, for for generations you you take uh, you know you look, look at the Vietnamese dong I, I mean before before the war before that it was running at about Two dollars and something, two seventy-one uh, per unit. Okay, and now look at it. Look at it for years and years and years. So devalued, it's just absolutely ludicrous. So, and, and you, when you revalue a currency that is distributed by that com that country, you have to get it to a a, a marker uh, with the wealth of the country and a marker that is going to represent that country's currency. An equal, uh, an, an equal value. Uh, you're not going to do it with, you know, two cents on the dollar. It's not going to work. You got when you start equalizing the wealth on the planet for all countries, all right. And then on top of that, getting it into the hands of the people instead of just giving it all to the governments. That it doesn't work. It never has. I, I'd like to have anybody debate that with me anytime. It doesn't work across the planet. It never has, or this planet wouldn't be in the shape it is, and the civilization wouldn't be in the shape it is. So when you, you take this clear perspective outside of what the current construct, you revalue currencies across the board. You've got some bonds that you s very secretly issue and you know s get out there. You have to have a delivery system. This is about the best way that you could come up with instead of dropping it from planes in the air. So you, 
you literally connect with all of the emotional intentions of the spirit energy of all of humanity. So through a whole different form of com computating uh, with the a, a quantum, okay, quantum is very small. So when they say quantum financial system, a very small part, all the way detailed particles are, and, and if you look at a quantum computer, it is totally different than a PC or an IBM sitting somewhere in a room, totally different. Uh, it works from a quantitative type of process and it can connect to all of humanity on a sentient level to determine their emotional uh, intent, period. So it would put a lie detector to shame completely. So the intent of people is monitored so that they're, and, and unfortunately, guys, we've got, there are some people out there that they got a hold of wealth. They would not do good things. They just wouldn't. And that's, that's just the way it is. We, we have to understand that and, and, you know, organize that with our thinking to say, well, that's expected. That's understandable. So you're going to have some people that will get wealth that will go crazy. I don't, you know, it's just the way it is. You'll have some people that will not go crazy, but they'll, they might step out of a, uh, you know, the, the background and, and expose themselves too much. You have people that are just going to sit back very quietly and maneuver and take care of things. And they're going to wait until everything clears because the, the financial, re, and I'm not talking about the restructuring of the old system. I'm talking about a completely new system that's going to be employed on this planet. Not, the, not, not one repackaged to look differently so everybody thinks it's different, but it's not. But a brand new from the ground up system for the civilization, geared toward the people and not the governments. That's a difference. If it goes to the governments, unfortunately, if it, if it went to the people, and there's a lot of caring people in this country alone, we would have phenomenal roads, phenomenal bridges. Our infrastructure would be pristine, you know? People would, would have the ability and the, and the wealth to distribute and fix things introduce technologies, not have to go through layers and layers of regulation, constructs, laws, disciplines that bog it down for years and years and years. That would be gone, see? This is how you, you, you want to look outside of this construct because it's very easy to get caught up in it and get confused. Well, how can we do this if this, 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 and this, see? In the beginning, it's very careful, methodically carried out, and then eventually it becomes more and more out in the open and people become more and more acclimated, more and more introduced to this. And we want to make uh, celestial chambers a household word, right? You go to someone's house, you say, oh, what, what's that room? That's celestial chamber room. I go there to reatomize my body, right? It, it, wow, that's, that, and these would be people that will be introduced to it for the first time. I've heard of those, but I've never seen one, never used one. In eventuality, we'll get it out to everybody. So everybody has one. Everybody has replicators. In knowledge, the people gain the knowledge. They're not kept in the dark. The whole civilization begins to say, I'm thinking for myself. I'm leaving my, for myself. I can do these things and help everyone. Help myself, help everyone. And treat value, the highest value in the universe is life. So we, we literally, we create value and build wealth for ourselves and the civilization. That's bottom line. Wealth can be many things. So the financial aspect of this, and understand this, when people are finally able to access the wealth, to understand what the intent here is, it's to rebuild the infrastructure of the planet geared toward the civilization and not to a handful of people that are supervising and ruling over the many on the planet, okay? 
So this is to get the wealth to the people, equal distribution, so the people of the planet begin to take responsibility to rebuild the infrastructure so that the entire civilization is happy, healthy, wealthy. Uh, Jared, it, um, is it possible for you to talk a little bit about the um, the timing for the, uh, I, I know that you were having talks about regular talks about in the past about the uh, revaluation of the currencies, the financial reset and all that. Would you be able to share with us <laughs> about the timing? Yeah, the timing element, as everybody knows, is a very uh, perplexing issue. Understand when you have you got opposing side and you've got the, you got two opposing sides. You've got the one that wants financial harmony for the civilization. You got the other one that doesn't. The other one that doesn't has been in charge forever. Okay. The one that, that wants this is what we're seeing happening in this constant second by second tug of war. So you get disinformation that's on purpose. It's meant to disharmonize people. It's meant to get people irritated, upset, worried, and stressed. Up and down, up and down, up and down emotionally. You know, this on and off, on and off, on and off, on and off. The, the reason is, is that, that there's really not going to be it's on type of thing. It's not going to go that way. It's not going to be where everybody, you know, this is how we have been trained to think, remember. So we look for external authority to tell us, okay, it's on. Go for it. Right? It's going to be a very subtle and, and unassuming, and people are going to go, wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay, so now I can go do my business. Now I can go take care of my finances. Yep, you sure can. Right? And pretty much it's going to be real simple. So if the time element, I can tell you right now, they're slow. It's real. It's been a lot slower than expected. Uh, they, you know, it'd be really nice if you had everybody in agreement with this, but you've got all of these people with different personalities, different agendas, different desires, every, all mixed in across the planet. And everybody wants this, wants this, wants that, wants this, wants this. You imagine that. Can you imagine the different social structures and cultures of the planet trying to come together for the first time ever in total harmony? Yeah? So it's not so much someone is, is trying to hold this thing up. That, that's been there. It's more of everybody coming into the understanding is that, look, guys, this is going to the people of the planet. This is not going to empower and repeat the same process of the governments in past generations and now that have literally stymied the growth of the civilization through their own uh, greed, avarice, control, power, uh, insatiable appetites and deception. Okay. You know, and, and so you have to switch gears and get it to the people. Well, Unfortunately for the people, there are those that are thinking that they can think for the people, determine for the people, decide for the people, which has always gone on. So the people never have the opportunity to think for themselves and lead themselves because they're conscious beings. You know, they're not in that 3,000 years ago, they could have been led. They were led, but not now. That, that ended 3,000 years ago, but they've convinced to not think for themselves and not lead themselves. So the governments do all that. So the governments keep most of the money. If they didn't keep most of the money, do you think we would have the homelessness in this country alone defecating in the streets? Do you think we would have the problems that we have in this country today? No, they're generated, they're created. So you, this is the perspective that you really should look at and un, then you start to understand for yourselves Okay, so now there's a lot of people that aren't in harmony that are trying to figure out how they can get the, the, the majority to agree to say, okay, we're good to go. Okay? So then you have people that are intel sources, intelligent, in, in, you know, information sources, 
who are told certain things then give that information to those who get it out to the people, to the, those that are watching things. And then and it changes from minute to minute. So they give out this information and they were told this and that and everything looks in and then nothing happens, nothing happens, nothing happens. I, we, are, we are rather tired of all these changes um, from the disclosure intel. Would you be able to give us some new, fresh information on the disclosure intel? Jim? Well, the, the current structure of this whole system, it literally rests in the now, right now. So it depends on one thing only. Are they willing and ready to release it to those? I shouldn't say to the people. It's only a handful of people that are going to have the wealth. It's not like, you know, it's, it's a handful of million, you know, so, you know, maybe three, four, five million, if that, holding any amount of wealth that they can go and exchange. That's not a lot of people. So it's, that's where it's, currently sitting time-wise is that, you know, and this is the way to, to really comprehend this so that you don't get frustrated, <laughs> that you can literally go to bed tonight and wake up in the morning and, and things are rocking and rolling. That's literally what, how this thing has been structured for a very long time. And I think if people had been, had been shared that in the beginning, okay, it would have gone much easier for people to comprehend and understand that it is, it, it, it quit relying on outside sources and understand the structure of this whole thing is that it literally has been engaged. It is literally taking place across the planet. It has not gotten to the point where people can have a bunch of money. That it, it hasn't, it's not there yet. They're taking a very long time it coordinating with the different countries on the planet. You know, mainly you've got Russia, you've got China, and you've got, you've got the, the Asian countries, and you've got Eastern Europe, and you've got, you know, the, the basically all the different countries on the planet coordinating. Let's set up the right trade routes. Let's get this going. Let's get that going. All right? Mm -hmm. And you'll see that there have been statements made from the people in this country stating that the American people are going to experience great times of prosperity. Uh, these are little subtle hints that have been thrown out there. You, you literally can't watch the news. You can't watch the television. You can't read the papers because they're all derogatory. They're all misguided and, and meaning to direct you in chaos and frustration. And some people anger and, you know, desperation. All right. Now, Time element is, is that it, and that gives you a lay of the land. It gives you an understanding is that, you know, you've got all of these different countries coordinating, setting up, getting this done. And guess what? It's already been engineered. It's already been set in place. Now, does it make any sense to anybody that this, some of the information that comes out is true. Majority of it isn't. It's, it's, dis, it's misguided information. It doesn't mean those who are giving it are in the wrong, it just means that they believe that what they're being given is the truth. And, it, and the truth can be, you know, misguiding. So what happens is, is that you have a blast of wealth getting to the people of the civilization, of the planet, to, to, to humanity. Handful of people that will distribute the wealth eventually to the rest of the population. And you've got all these countries wanting their fair share of this new prosperity for the civilization of the planet. And so one says, I'm not getting enough here, so I want this. Another one says, well, I don't agree with this. So we got to change this. We have to change this. It is so archaic on how it's being done. And this is my own personal opinion that, that it, it, it can be done a lot differently, but it's, it, it's all, it's, you know, it's kind of connected and gibberish and, clogged up because all they know is how they've always operated. Understand that. Mm -hmm. We're going to be operating in a wholly different direct, whole different direction. So the time element on this is I can tell you that it can drop 
and it will not be any kind of a hoopla. It'll just, you'll just look for the signs, look for what's going on as far as everything that you can read about from the standpoint of underground, getting to the truth sources and determining that, okay, so in this country, we're going to have a new currency. It's going to be gold backed. Bottom line. All right. And it is not going to be controlled by a corporation. Uh, and that new currency will be distributed amongst the people and everybody will adjust to it and it'll be a gold standard. It's the only thing that they know to go back to is a gold standard to, to solidify for a temporary period of time, to solidify everything, get everything distributed. So the time element here is watch. Here's the keys for everybody. Watch the hard assets, period. Watch them. Watch the gold. Watch the silver. Those are the hard elements. Those are the most mainstream hard. There's platinum and palladium and others, but look at the gold and look at the silver. Those are the mainstays for the planet. Watch. You can't believe what everybody else is saying. Oh, this country doesn't have any gold, this one, that, and they're broke here and broke there. It's all a facade. It's all a show. So engineered, created. So if you look at the gold, look at the silver, you understand that this is hard asset back currency on the planet. This is the only way they know how to distribute. That's what you're going to know when the thing is engaged, period. The, 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 the numbers are set, everyone. The numbers are set. So it doesn't matter what's being said. They, they're meant to confuse, meant to disorient people, to misguide them. The numbers are set, and, and the amount of exchange you've got to understand is astronomical. I don't understand why people get so tied up and how much is it going to be? How much am I going to get? It's, it's ludicrous to believe that, to think that way, because it's absolutely astronomical. It, it's unending. Uh, people are going to be, when they're hit with the reality of this, and it's very soon to take place, but when they're hit with the reality, and all the time, whether they've been watching for 20 years, 30 years, I, you know, on and on for the prosperity packages, for the Omega, for all of these things that have been, the farmer's claims, everything. These are other distribution channels. So you, when you look at all of this stuff and you start to understand and comprehend, it's very simple. I watch the gold, I watch the silver. That's all I do. I watch the gold, and I watch the silver. And you, you have, if you're carrying wealth, which you are, each of you are carrying wealth. You all have paper. You all have wealth. That's it, period. You start realizing that. You have wealth, right? It's a stored amount of wealth that you're carrying. You are absolutely guaranteed to not have to ever worry about finances again. Now, if you put that and interject that in your thinking, all right, you have and hold wealth. If you hold that in your mind and understand that you will not have to ever have to worry about financial insecurity again. And even those who aren't holding well, but are aware of this, will be provided for. It's the point is, is to eliminate scarcity and lack of. It's the opposite of what they have always implemented upon the civilization. It's totally the opposite. See, they want scarcity and lack of to scare and keep the people in fear. We want abundance and prosperity and to circulate wealth throughout the civilization. It totally goes against the grain of those who have controlled forever. It's just not how they think, but it's how we think. Mm -hmm. And we're a growing element on the planet. So we, we believe this and in and, and, and true just harmony for the population. Your spirit's abundant, your body will be abundant, and everything that I have discussed is coming, and it is not years off. It is, the, the technologies will be here very quickly. The financial restitution for the civilization of the planet is already engaged. Uh, you, you just have to watch the gold and the silver. Watch it. And it will give you signs, and it will tell you exactly Okay, well, this is, and then watch what happens. You'll have, you'll have a contact number, that contact number, because I have spoken with the people who six years ago, at least, started, were approached to set up the 800 call center, the 800 number call centers. 
These people were asked to go in, they were trained a long time ago. All right, there'll be one 800 number that'll come out and everybody will access it. It'll go into a call center. It's very simple. They'll go into a call center. They will ask you uh, what you're carrying as far as assets. And, and then they will ask you where you're at so that they can direct you to another number that will direct you to the closest area where you can transact, All right? And you'll call that number, you'll set up your appointment, you'll go in and you'll take care of business, pretty much. I'd recommend that you don't, that you don't expose yourself, that you don't go crazy, that you don't, uh, you know, I would sit back and I would let the smoke and dust clear and I would wait and I would calculate and work on what am I going to do and how am I going to do it. That's it. Think for yourself, lead yourself, and start calibrating because you're going to have to become educated anyway. You're going to have to learn how you're going to handle this. Some of you are carrying astronomical amounts of wealth. I uh, don't understand why you would want any more. I mean, it, it, you, you, it'd take you thousands of years to spend it all. It's crazy. And after you get whatever you want personally, then what are you going to do? So this is, this is it, and, and it's the best way I can put it, it's already been engaged. It's not, see, this is what's the, 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 this, the, the, how people get confused. They're looking for, okay, on this time and this date, it's revealed and it's happened. It already has happened. You look at the markers on the planet. If you look at the structure, if you look at what some of these governments are doing, if you look at how the temperature of, of, of the civilization is in the people, it's already taking place. The more chaos that you see, the more it's taking hold. Watch for the chaos. You're going to see it. You're going to see a lot of it. You're going to see things that will go, holy cow, all right? Every way, shape, and form to cause this not to occur is going to be futile because it's already engaged. It's already in full motion. The, the markers are there. The gold standard's been engaged. All countries have to do now is to start letting the people know, we're on a new system. It's the gold standard. We've gone back to the gold standard. It's, you know, it's a hard asset-backed currencies, which we had at one time on the planet. Didn't last long because then it was infiltrated and corrupted, and then they went to the fiat system. So because everybody wanted to just print wealth without any responsibility. So now we go back to the gold standard, and it's already engaged, all right? China's on the gold standard. Russia's on the gold standard. They don't announce it. They've all got their gold reserves. Everybody's got their gold reserves. Everybody on the planet, everybody's got the wealth, equal distribution of wealth amongst the civilization of the planet. So it's already happening. It's just that your bell hasn't been rung yet. It's just that you haven't been given an access number. And when you get that access number, they have the capacity to take thousands of calls. And it'll be bump, 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 bump. It's already been engineered, it's already been trained, it's already been designed, it's already been locked in place. The distribution channels are there. Now, the biggest concern they have is how are people going to show the responsibility of handling the wealth? That is the number one issue that they're having with it. How are people, now, do you honestly think that they should think for the people? That they should have to lead the people? That, that's the old way. People think for themselves and lead themselves. They start to understand that, you know, I've got to be responsible and I've got to be able to take care of this wealth uh, in, in, a, in a responsible way and understand I take care of my personal, family, whatever, and then I figure out what I'm going to do for the rest of my brothers and sisters on the planet. Could be small. It could be anything. Could be doesn't have to be some humongous uh, undertaking. It could be community affairs. You know, start your own communities. Yeah. Leave the ego at the door and just say, "What can I do for others? What can I do unselfishly, not expecting anything in return? Well, how can I help others? What can I do for them?" That's going to be the fun for people. That's really going to be the true rewarding and appreciation for the wealth that right. you'll have to be entrusted with the distributor. Sherrod, <clears throat> uh, time's marching on. I 
got to say that uh, now uh, we got to open it to the floor now for the uh, questions, the Q&A session, because um, I've actually lengthened this, uh, your talk a bit because um, it's important for the people to know what you have to say. Um, we will have to stop soon, but uh, uh, to go to the next session. So uh, James, would you come forward to represent the, uh, the people, the participants here in this meeting with their questions for Jared? And it's got to be quick because we only have about 10 to 15 minutes to complete the Q&A session before we hop into the second session. Thank you. Thanks, James. Okay, great. Uh, hello, everybody. So um, let me go through the group chat here. And if you have any more questions, just throw them in the group chat. I'm going to start from the very beginning. Uh, question for Jared. I understand that you can construct 30 units per day, but after 10,000 years, less than 2% of the population would have a chamber. So maybe you're going to have to explain about the uh, distribution model. And can uh, somebody unmute Valerie, please? Jared? Yeah. The question was, how are we going to be able to get enough of these units out to, to the general population when you're only going to make 30 units a day? I don't know where the 30 came from, but... Huh. Uh, when we get, you know, there's always, you, you know, you have unknowns, but when we get to, you know, generically speaking, when we get to a full run, you know, production units, our purpose is to get them to hubs around the country and around the planet so that the groups in those hubs can start making them and then they can start distributing them within their vicinities. So we have like different hubs on the planet located. So the game plan is, is that we get the first working first run production unit then we start manufacturing those uh and, and number and we start getting them to the hubs who then begin to start manufacturing those in number so that we can have more than one distribution channel of getting these out to different people in different communities and to have them be effective so we're not you know people would like us to be able to have a hundred thousand in people's homes in a matter of months and that's just not possible uh, it's just not practical. Well, how, how how fast do you think it will take before we can get these out to the public? What are you uh, looking at here, a timeline? Well, well, to get it to the public, you know, to start having people use the celestial chamber, like I said, we'll start with one. Uh, we'll run tests. We'll do run-throughs with people. Uh, we'll do uh, film video footage so that we have archives of it. Uh, then we will start going to other locations through travel, through uh, 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 anti-gravitic travel, through different parts of the country so that we can start affecting change immediately. Eventually, we will start to get them into people's hands so that they can use them themselves. We have to get the manual put together so it's easily read. Uh, you know, the... the the, the comprehension in this country is at third grade reading level, but people don't understand that. So we have to get different information out that's simply understood and they can understand how to operate these. You know, it's not like turning on a toaster. You, you have to understand the applications and everything. So it, 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 to get it out to the entire, the entire entire population, we don't have a set date for that. We know that we can get the major metropolitan areas, usually in the rural and country areas, very fairly quickly. Uh, we can start producing on a 300 employee manufacturing facility, running three lines 24 seven, that we could pump out several thousand a week. Uh, and at that stage, we can then start carrying them and setting them up in different parts of the country. So eventually, in eventuality, we could start affecting the whole entire population. Uh, but it won't, wouldn't be for a couple of years. Can you comment a little bit more about watching the gold and silver price? What are we supposed to look for in particular? You're going to want to watch uh, what it's actually doing out of Singapore, out of, um, out of Shanghai uh, in, uh, in Asia. You, you don't want to really watch too much with the London market, but you want to watch Shanghai. Um, and you want to watch the Asian market uh, and see what's happening with the metal. Uh, they control the pricing of it right now. They always have. Uh, 
so they don't want to get out. You know, it's, it's a possibility. Understand that if, if the actual ability to have above ground mined mineral of, of the metal, uh, you, you have a certain storehouse of it. You can distribute it equally. Then you want to, you can increase the price of gold and silver to compensate for the backing of the hard assets per the paper currency. So if you then lift the cap on gold and silver, it will skyrocket. Uh, gold, and I'm telling you, gold is being bought at a, at a, at a high rate and silver even more uh, for hard asset security. So if you look at the gold, they could lift, when they lift the cap, you, you could see gold go to 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, 6,000, 10,000, 50,000. Uh, per ounce. You can see silver go into the thousands as well per ounce. The reason for this is to, you know, it, it, it increases the amount of metal to back the currency. The price of the metal can be increased exponentially to back. So let's say a country has only so many tons. Well, if it's at 1,300 an ounce, 1,400 an ounce, it shoots up to five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You've got uh, a, a lot more value in the metal to back much more paper currency. You see what I mean? Even though it's fractionated per paper, the fact of the matter is, is that's a that's a real good way to do equal distribution of wealth across the planet for some of these countries that have low amounts of gold and silver. You can in, you literally increase the cap of gold and silver. And you're most likely, you're gonna see that happen very shortly, all right? And it won't be, it's not gonna be a little bit, it's just gonna boom, it'll be there. So that's why I tell people to watch it and don't listen to everything. Don't believe these so-called, a lot of these so-called, not all of them, but some of these so-called experts on their opinions of gold and silver. For yourself, watch it different avenues look at it just see what happens with it and you're gonna you'll, you'll be blown away because all of a sudden you're gonna look at it and it's gonna be skyrocketing it'll be up and I'm telling you the reason why you understand the logic in this with the currency with the new financial system with gold and silver hard asset back currencies how are they going to support all of the paper and the wealth you it literally increase the price of gold and silver exponentially it's very easy to do, increase the value. You know, it could be river rocks. River rocks, you could say for every ounce of river rock, it, it could be 10,000 an ounce. It just, it's in the mindset of the people, right? Gold and silver has always been identified as valuable. Guess what? They're using that as the instrument. That's pretty much it. Well, have you been told uh, a timeline and when this RV may take place? Okay, you got to be specific. The, the new currency values so that people are cashing in when they yes. ask that question, the new currency values when people actually can go and cash their uh, monies in. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you know, you give out a time and people count on that time and then it doesn't happen and then it's frustrating for them. So all I can tell you is, is that, it's a watchdog day-to-day -day basis. It, it, it literally, you can wake up tomorrow morning and it's a done deal. That's as best I can do. Okay. Um, can you comment a little bit more on how people can involve, get themselves involved with the prototype testing that you mentioned earlier? Yeah. Uh, people are sending um, emails to the silvergalaxy at protonmail.com. The Silver Galaxy, all one word, all lowercase, at protonmail.com. And uh, then I process them and put them in a group of sincere participants that want to participate and respond to them that they have been put into the group and that they will be contacted uh, and start, we start educating them on the process. Will they have to travel to a location where you're, you're located or will they be sent a unit? We're going to send them a unit and with a team with the unit uh, in a secured area. So they have to verify and confirm with us that they have a secured area. 
uh, they also have to sign, you know, non-disclosures. And they also have to be compliant with the understanding of what, what kind of a team have you put together? Who do you have on your team? What, what disciplines? What specialties? Uh, are they outside the box or are they of the conventional way of thinking? Uh, because this technology is way past any conventional technology. So once that's understood and once that's been confirmed and verified, we then send a team with a unit to them. We sit down. We discuss with them. We lay out the parameters. We give them specifics, we give them actually the, uh, the uh, stats, the blueprints, the layout, the constructs, all the materials needed uh, to construct fabrication, everything. So that's how we'll do it. Did okay. You that last question, James? Yeah, go ahead, Ron. Well, look at the last question. Ann asked a good question there. Uh, he might want to answer right now. So the question is, can people use the healing chambers to have stainless steel or titanium in their bodies? I'm assuming they want to become a cyborg of some sort. They want to know what? I, 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 it sounds like they want to become a cyborg. Um, no, what it will do, so they understand, is that if you have implants like titanium, plastics, synthetics, defibrillator, uh, whatever, um, it's it's atomized it's I, yeah i i misunderstood the question it's so if they have stainless steel or titanium in their body so what what happens to them maybe yeah, it's, like it's a, eliminated a through the reatomization process in the body memory through the dna so it as if it never was there so it literally eliminates all of the tra implants transplants everything and the reatomization through the database through the ai identifies those anomalies and it as through the reatomization process it reverses the infected area and it identifies it as being infected because it has uh, a synthetic uh, you know iron and metal and plastics and stuff in the body which are not biological so it eliminates them so if you have I'll give you an example if you have a hip replacement you've got a titanium shank with the the, the plastic joint and, and in your hip, and it literally will identify that, and it will ask, do you want this reatomized? Which means that it'll pass over, and it will reverse the field and the memory and that part of the body, as if, and it will replace it with new bone, uh, and, and through, the, through the DNA, new bone, and new cartilage, and muscle, and tendons, and tissue. So as it passes over, that's exactly what will happen. It, it, it never existed. So the memory in the DNA, the, 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 the human doesn't have, it, it was never there. Okay, great. So can you comment on whether or not this device can assist mental or disorders of the psyche? Um, okay, that's a good question. The... Uh, celestial chamber will do the body. We have a, another technology that will actually um, uh, reatomize the brain. So, okay. so I which guess means that comes later. That, which means that uh, we're going to try to incorporate it right with uh, the celestial chamber. So what that means is, is that Alzheimer's, dementia, any brain disorder, emotional or chemical imbalances and frequency imbalances in the body, uh, you know, anxiety, tension, depression, AD, all these labels, ADHD, social anxiety, all of those will be eliminated. The memory in the DNA will be erased. It'll be reset. Can you comment on, on does this technology work similar to a regeneration tank in which you would, I guess, sit into a tank of goo or something and uh, the body regrows itself? Is that uh, necessary? Yeah. Now, that, that's, they're looking at cloning, uh, replicating a human body vessel. Now, what this does is it takes the human with the spirit currently in that body, and it takes that human body, it resets the DNA, and it totally reatomizes all the tissue. And all the anomalies, understand, disease, aging, all of the, the discrepancies that it appear, it will set the body to perfect harmony and health 20, 30, 35 years old. 
And um, will the device activate all your psychic gifts so you can become fully telekinetic or tele telepathic, for example? Well, what will happen is that, number one, for the first time, in the, the, the pineal gland will be clean and fully functioning. For those of you who are aware of the pineal gland and our gateway or dimensional gateway to communicate and project, also psychic, clairvoyant, true psychic clairvoyant, which means that you're telepathic to the senses and the energy waves and fields of existence. So, you know, these things will come alive. Uh, also, your genetic mapping, your, your, your tree, uh, your DNA tree. Uh, your uh, strands of DNA. Uh, you've got 24 in there, give or take. They'll uh, start to engage and start to come into play, and they'll start uh, coming alive. You will start experiencing, and it just depends on how you handle it, you'll start experiencing um, waves of awareness, understanding. Some people will begin to elevate. They could be standing somewhere and all of a sudden, because of what they're uh, thinking, their bodies, they'll just float off the ground, maybe four or five feet. You know, there's going to be a lot of change and a lot of uh, adjustment that's going to take place with people. So it won't enhance anything because you already have everything. So it's just going to open up the understanding that you do have these abilities. All right. Can you comment on which country will get this technology first? Is it America or, or some other location? Uh, there's, there, there's a group in China. There's us in, in uh, America. And there's a group in Russia. Those are the, those are the three locations currently. Okay. And can you com? Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. Uh, can you comment if these chambers can work on animals and plants? Yes. Oh. Yes, they can. So your pets won't, won't age anymore if, if that's what you want? or that's, I mean, how, that's what you want. Uh, well, but what, how, do, how do we know what, what the animals want? Or, or does it affect well, their Well, that's the point right there, say. Yeah, until you can communicate with the animal spirit, its essence, uh, you know, you're not going to know this, you, you, if, depending on your connection with your pet or your animal, uh, as I call them family members, you're going you're gonna to have to know this, you, you, you know, do they want to? Now, obviously, like any of us, is they're, they're inflicted with the disease of aging, and they get joint problems and everything, and they're in pain, and they get, you know, mental issues and stuff, and digestive, you're going to... You, Obviously, do you want to you want to allow them, give them the opportunity to continue in a young body, which is going to be your decision until you can communicate with them one to one. All right, right, you, uh, uh, James. Go ahead. Sorry, we don't have much time left because we have a next session uh, for the uh, the technology bit. So uh, if you've got a lot more on the questions in the chat room, then the, we have to compress it a bit. <laughs> I only have one more question. Okay, and go that ahead. That is, is, is this technology extraterrestrial in, in origin, and which groups are working with you? This is uh, off-world. <laughs> it is not... Uh, the technology comes from a distant universe. So none of the uh, talked about civilizations are this particular technology's true source. Okay, thank you very much, Jerry. Oh, thank you. thank you. Thank you so much. Um, apparently, co-chair Elizabeth Donovan had not been around. She stepped out of the room. I guess she had to attend an urgent call. Thanks so much, James, for taking over the job for her. And uh, right, I would like to take this opportunity to thank you so much, Jared. It's such an honor to have you here to speak at Physics 64th meeting again. I mean, you were speaking on the 63rd meeting earlier, and we had a lot of information from you. And uh, today we've got more. And uh, thank you so much from all of us on behalf of Physique. I 
would like to now adjourn the meeting to the next session. The next session, I welcome any one of you here who's interested in the free en energy technology making of the, the prototype of the, uh, the uh, buoy marine motor generator. You're most welcome to join us again. So what we're going to do is um, we're going to stop the recording and then uh, stay back. Don't go if you're interested in the next session and join us in the next session. We're not going to hop out of the Zoom room. It's going to continue. Okay. It's just the recording that's going to break. Right. Um, I would like to thank you again, Jared, for speaking at this session. And um, there being no other business, now this first session of the 64th Physique Meeting is now adjourned to the second session where we talk about the technology of uh, free energy, alternative energy, the making of the buoy marine motor generator prototype. And thank you so much, everyone. Namaste. Namaskar. Thank you for joining us today for this session. Thank you. Thank you. It's been my humble pleasure, Crystal, and everyone. Thank you very much. The pleasure is ours. Thank you, Jared. Right, so we can stop the recording now. <laughs>